I'm with Pete Cope and he's going to tell us a couple of stories about the late Alan Bickers. When you're ready, Pete. OK, the, um, I'm just mentioning that uh, the first game I saw down at League Town was in 1971 and uh, they had an experimental Sunday match to try and get more supporters in. League Town won 11-0. The next day I was down on the ground helping the groundsman and I've been involved ever since. The centre forward of that particular team at the time was Alan Vickers, a legend at this club in my opinion. He also went on to manage the club and I've got numerous uh, occasions where I've uh, got little ditties from, that I can remember of the great man. Before we move on to his managerial time here, yeah. what's your greatest memories of play wearing the number nine shirt? The, the funniest thing I ever remember was he, he was so far ahead of the competition he was playing quite often. I remember one particular time he, he went past the defender, left the defender sprawling on the floor, he, he'd gone past him, and Alan went and sat on the football, <laughs> he waited for the man to come and catch him up, and, and, he, and Alan stood there, taunting him, saying, go on, try again. <laughs> and that, that was the sort of player he was, he'd got a wonderful left foot, he was quite... Uh, Put it politely, he was, he was well built. He was quite. <coughs> he was a robust centre forward line. Robust, line-like. old fashioned centre forward. Do you know how many goals he scored, Polly? Roughly. I don't know how many goals he scored, but another little memory that I had <coughs> we played, um, I think it was a friendly match once uh, at Macclesfield Town. And Macclesfield Town's centre half at the time was Ron Yates. Oh, he used, Liverpool. He used to play for Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, getting towards the end of his career and Alan Vickers gave him a bloody nose elbowed him on the nose and Ron Yates spent the last final ten minutes of the game chasing Alan Vickers all over the pitch to try and catch up with him <laughs> Did you keep him with school? Uh, I can't remember the score for no. that game at all Did Alan school that day? Alan, I think Alan scored, <clears throat> yeah So did you meet him off the pitch? Well, I was secretary of League Town Football Club mm -hmm. when Alan was the manager of League Town Football Club. Yeah, right. going the And considering he ended up working for the Staffs FA in an administrative role, oh. it's amazing because when he was the manager and I was the secretary, it was an absolute nightmare. Because if you remember back in those days, there was no internet. There was no mobile phones, there was no fax machines. And I'd quite often turn up on a match day and say, who's that sitting over there? <laughs> He'd got a new player in and I knew nothing about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Was he successful, Danny, as a manager? Yes, he was. What league were we in? Were in Cheshire County League? I think it'd be, it could well have been, yeah, the Cheshire County League, I mm -hmm. would have thought at the time. So, if I was to ask you a question now. Yep. Where would you rank <clears throat> Alan as a League Town player? Would you bring him to the top, well, top five? It's strange. I, I've watched League Town since 71. The only team I can still remember and name 1 to 11 is that 71 team. Can you name and them? Part, I can <clears throat> name that 71 team, yeah. Okay, I said them. The, uh, the, the team it always used to be, and it was the same week in, week out. It wasn't all this faffing around with playing yeah. positions and things. So we had two goalkeepers, David Eikin and Alan Clark. And Paul Ogden, the manager at the time, used to rotate them. So one would play one week, one would play the other. The right back was Donny Blackburn, who was a Londoner, ginger-haired Londoner. Left back was Jeff Hessel. Number four was Phil Blood. Five was Gordon Hamlet. Six was David Pope. Seven was uh, usually, just sign, I think he was, was Keith Mottershead, who we signed from Stafford Rangers. Eight was uh, Alan, was. Eight was. Uh, 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 just trying to think now. I'm going to tell you, Jeff Parker. Nine was Alan Vickers, ten was Noel Nicklin, and eleven was Carl Jusikowski. But the other number eight was Peter Rag. 
Now, Peter Rag, in my opinion, is the finest player that's ever played at League Town. Really? And he also went on to manage League Town. So, uh, and that was it. And we, in those days, we only used to ever <coughs> one substitute. Did he, did he have a successful team. period, like, when he was managing the club, Alan? Yeah, he, he, he did quite well at that time. Good afternoon. Oh, excuse me, but I've just been out on the terraces. Now I'm going to say a few words about Mr. Alan Vickers, a man that I had the privilege of playing with for a number of years, especially at Northwich Victoria, League Town, in a brief, a brief time at Kidsgrove Athletic. Now, obviously, with me being a goalkeeper and Alan was a centre forward, there's a lot of distance between us. But to remember most about a lot of games. Now, Alan was a centre forward who was very strong. Not too tall, but an old-fashioned centre-forward who had a wonderful left foot and a marvellous right elbow, which he used very well at certain times, <laughs> as I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> now, he played for clubs like Oswald Street, uh, mainly local clubs, Oswald Street, uh, Northwich Victoria, Kidsgrove, Leak Town. Uh, and he, I know he played for Oswald Street a couple of times, but I remember him very well, mainly playing with him at League Town and also at Northwich Victoria and briefly at Kidsgrove. Now Alan, uh, I remember lots of times, there's lots of tales about Alan, uh, probably one of the best uh, was when we played in the Manchester League uh, against uh, Staley Bridge Celtic and the centre half that day was Ron Yates, the legendary Liverpool centre half. And uh, they had a real tussle during that game and of course Alan was very brutal and very physical. And uh, in the second half, uh, they were just running along and uh, nobody ever saw his elbow come up, but it used to come up and it used to hit him in the face. And then the next thing you saw, the centre half, especially Ron Yates, would be lying on the pitch with a bleeding nose. And even the referee or nobody didn't know what had happened because he was very good at disguising it. And after the game, Ron Yates always said in all his career, he'd played in some Tough, t tough games and some tough centre forward, but none. One of his brut brutalities was uh, obviously against Alan. And then there was all the tales about him. I, I remember in the Manchester League when uh, we needed one point to stay in touch for winning the league. And that year we won the Gilchrist Cup and the league. We wanted to win the game. It was against Kears and Ashton. And at half time we came in and we were one nil down. And uh, uh, the, the manager of them days were Paul Ogden and Paul Ogden put his arm uh, we came out to, to start the second half and Alan Vickers went back in we were 1-0 down needing to win the game so Alan Vickers went to Paul Ogden went back in the dressing room and put his arm around him. he said don't worry boss it'll all be alright and Alan went out on the pitch that in the second half and got two and we won the match 2-1 and the same thing happened at Northridge Victoria this was in the Anglo-Italian tournament. I can't remember to this day who we were playing, but I know for a fact that we were 3-2 down at half time and Alan was a substitute. And Paul Ogden was the manager there at that time. And he sent him on again and he says, can you get amongst them and be a bit physical that Alan was? And he finished up, we went on and scored two in the second half and we won that game 4-3. Now, he was a wonderful, wonderful player. Uh, which I don't think we get the likes of him anymore in the game. And the tales go, with, which is true, that he was asked to go to have a trial with uh, Manchester United and Port Vale, uh, sorry, and uh, Liverpool. But he turned it down, obviously, to stay with his local players that he liked and his family. He was a big family man and he also liked to drink after the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also... Uh, he, I'm just trying to think now. Uh, he, he did go to Port Vale and play there and Stoke City, but he never really played there for a long time. But one of the reasons that he didn't stay there long was the, they found that most of the players were getting injured in training because Alan was that brutal with his physique and obviously his elbow, and they were having more injuries than they were turning out on a Saturday's game. So I think that's why Alan's career ended there. To give us some idea, what period of time did you play with uh, Alan? I, I <clears> played <throat> with Alan in the 70s, mainly 72 to 74. 
And Alan, he could always go up another gear. He played within himself because he played with teams that were very good. And you take, for instance, League Town. They won the Manchester League and the Gilchrist Cup two years running, and then they won the Cheshire League. And they won 76 league games without being on the losing side. So really, he played within himself. But then, if we needed to win a game, he could up his game and, and we could win it. But one game we didn't win was in the FA Cup against... Uh, at Winsford and we lost that game 7-3 so he couldn't do it all the time obviously but he was very very good at it. I remember talking to you in the ground <clears throat> about two weeks ago I think it was and you were saying you're the best player that you've seen that week is Alan is that correct? I, I wouldn't say the best player the best striker. The best striker I beg your pardon. Yes and and once I played against him I played against him a couple of times but I remember once when I played against him and obviously with me being the goalkeeper, I had the brunt of him. And I remember catching a cross, falling down on the ground, and then he dropped with his knee in my chest. And from that point in the game, I, he'd really got to me. You know, he unsettled me and I could hardly get my breath the rest of the second half. So he was very, very physical, but a lovely man, a family man, and he could have gone on to better things in the game. He also managed League 10 then, did he? he for did, a period? yes. He what, was, what was he like when he was a manager? I, mean, I never obviously played under him, yeah. but I believe he was, you know, a good motivator, good man management and all that. And he went to manage Kids Grove as well. And I also think he managed All Sage Town as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but he was a lovely piece and brilliant player. Very, very physical. But I'll never forget his left foot and he was always stocking, obviously, his great right elbow. You know, it's a marvellous physical centre forward. A family man, loved being out with the, the players after a game and having a drink. But uh, I had the privilege of going to his funeral and the funeral was packed out and there was players there like Terry Conroy, uh, uh, Mark Bright and uh, the other Stoke win winger. Now, I just can't remember his name, but they all turned out for him. Chamberlain? Right? No, it wasn't Chamberlain. Was it before no. him? Harry Burroughs. Oh, it was Harry, Harry Burroughs, Harry what Burroughs a player he was. Uh, Harry Burroughs and Terry Conroy, yes. Mm. Yes, and there was all obviously local players there. But he could have gone on to better things. But, like I say, he was a family man and he liked being with people he knew. Well, that's a tribute to him, people like that. Absolutely, yes. That's, that's yes. a credit to him. It just yes. shows, you know, the level of football he played at yes. and well respected in the game, Yes, you know? But, I mean, the, the teams he played for were very good. I mean, and uh, they always said we'd never get him to Lick Town because he was always a Kids Grove player. Mm. But obviously Paul Ogden and Jeff Harrison worked the manage, ma magic and got him. But, Brilliant. you know, to win the... We went, like I say, 76 games and never on the losing side in a league match, winning, like, the double-double, yeah. double, which is the Manchester League and Gilchrist Cup, and then they won the Cheshire League. Super. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, I but I can't remember him playing in Tosworth Street because obviously that was yeah. one of his first clubs. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for taking time out, actually. Uh, can I say that's a lovely tribute? Oh, yes, but you just caught me on the up, you see. I, I know. Just come out of the stand. <laughs> I know. Freezing, I know. but no, I could. Wonderful, fond memories about mm. him. Wonderful player. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. It's a privilege to play with him thank and you. all that team. The, the bond was incredible, the Cheshire winning side. Yes. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Cheers.